scene you see in front of you at the moment is the scene that we started working on in previous uh, tutorials. Uh, but today what I particularly want to look at is uh, just editing the snow material a little bit. You can see from the image I've gone ahead and, and fleshed out the scene a little bit more, adding more detail as per our previous tutorial, so you can see the overall effect as we go. You can also see I have separated out uh, items onto separate layers. This is just to improve the workflow within view, um, hiding uh, memory intensive items like the meta blobs. I'm going to hide the hunter um, building as well, so we can just see the terrain. And let's have a look at the material for the terrain. At the moment it's a snow material which I've made, which you'll notice is very blue, but in the rendered scene the blue only really comes through in the shadows. Um, we'll look at that material as a separate tutorial uh, at some time in the future. So we'll go ahead and edit this material and what we're going to do is we're going to make it so that the flat areas of the scene, i.e. where people would be walking, are icy and muddy and leaving the, uh, the snow untouched so we can get it all done in one material. So I'm going to make it a mixed material and by default we get this flat grey material so that will help us see uh, in the preview exactly where the grey is going to appear. So before we look at creating the ground material we'll look at making the material distribution work for our scene. So we're going to look at the influence of the environment. So the first thing we'll do is, is activate it. Now I know that material 2 needs to be at low levels so we're going to change that to low altitudes and we're going to make it 100% that's a good place to start and we'll work back from that point. We also know that material 2 needs to appear on flat surfaces so again we'll make that at 100%. <clears throat> so we can see from the image now as it, as it resolves itself that We've got an awful lot of grey and not an awful lot of white. So we're going to look at the mixing proportions and I'm going to make it more snowy material than the grey. And we should see the scene refresh and you can see the snow now is starting to creep down the uh, terrain down towards ground level. So we'll reduce it even more. And wait for the refresh so we can see what's going on. We will inevitably have to do a test render. Um, one of the things I'm going to do to make our test render a little bit more uh, quickly rendered is I'm going to click here on the icon for the hunter between the plus sign and the word hunter. And I'm going to um, make that invisible. In other words, it won't render. And I'm going to do the same with the meta blobs. You may get a uh, a warning that pops up that says do you really want to hide this from render um, I've opted to not show this again so that I can actually see what's going on in my scene so if we just do a quick sample render now preview will do nicely we can see how the the material is already distributed I've forgotten to make that little bit of roof invisible and the question oh there it is Okay, so we saw from the preview render there that the snow is coming down the slope. Let's increase that influence of environment a little bit more and the material distribution. We'll give it a little bit more snow. We've crept down a little bit further, a little bit more snow. Okay, we'll do a quick test render, see where that leaves us. You can see at the moment it's not entirely all the way down to ground level. Now I suspect that even if I move that down to 1%, let's type that in instead of trying to use the slider, and we'll do a preview render, and we'll see what effect that's given us. Okay, so it's almost down to ground level. And we've got quite a hard line where the snow ends and the ground starts. So I'm going to have a look at in materials to mix and increase the blending. Let's try 
approximately, see what happens. Now that's a little bit better because we can see the snow is not such a hard edge. We'll try a little bit more. We may need to tweak this a little bit more after we've made the material. Well, let's go ahead and just do one more test render and just see what happens. Okay. So we've now got a distribution of snow and a ground material. So let's look at that ground material very quickly. So it's this material. And I'm going to uh, make a layer on top of that material. And this is going to be snow or ice, depends on how you want to interpret it. I'm going to make it a pale blue because, as you can see from the render, the blue comes through in the shadows and we want to enhance that cold feeling. So we've got a new layer on top of material. Material will just do very, very simply by making a natural green. Make sure it's unlocked because I'm going to do two shades of brown just to simulate muddy, muddy ground. OK, we'll leave it like that for the moment. And we'll go back to our new layer. We'll right click on the alpha production because we want some of the uh, ground to be visible through this snowy icy layer. So we'll set up very quickly. I'll right click and I'm going to drop in a fractal, just a simple fractal. And we'll link the alpha through to that. So remember, white is transparent, black is not transparent. So I'm going to break up that very quickly. And you can see the effect that we're getting on the material in the preview. We can also see it here within the render. I also want to look at looking at the transparency. So I'm going to say about a 50% approximately. And I'm going to give it a refractive index because if I give it a refractive index, I can also tinker with the reflections. And I want this to be fairly reflective. And I'll increase the highlights. OK, so let's see how that looks. OK, so we can see now we've got a very patchy floor. We've got some brown coming through. I might change that blue a little bit because it's a little bit too strong, that blue. Just a wee bit less. OK, what we can, we can further enhance that by looking at the bumpiness of this material. Depends on how close up you're going to go to it. But if we go to, we're going to look at the bump, right click. I'm going to use a noise fractal and I'm going to use line patterns and we'll use cracks. And we'll link that through to the bump. And if I just activate, oops. If I just activate the preview, we can see over 10 meters how large the cracks are. They're a little bit too large at 10 meters. So I'm going to reduce that right down. Quite small. And we'll look at how bumpy that is. 4.5 seems a little bit strong to me. We'll put 0 0.1. Let's have a look at the render. OK, even in the preview render, you can see that the cracks are evident within that material. And I'm going to further enhance the reflections just by adding a constant reflectivity. OK, so let's see how that looks with the building and everything in the scene. And we'll render. So you can see we've achieved what we were looking for. We have snow on the drifts as it were or even covering the landscape as it stands we've got it bleeding away into the ground material and we've ended up with quite a nice muddy texture with patches of white which could be ice could be snow the one thing i will look at is here the cracks are still far too large so i'm just going to quickly revisit that material i'm going to have a look at this layer and we're going to look at the scale of the bump because we can sneak it down a little bit more here. OK, so that's basically halved the size of the cracks. One more quick render. And I think 
for our purposes that is more than adequate so our scene is a little bit further along we've covered quite a few topics please feel free to go back uh, and visit the topics that we've covered already to create the position we're in at the moment um, and also regularly check on social media and YouTube for further updates and new tutorials thank you very much bye bye